we live in a very special place. And it has a very special origin. We can talk about John Brown and the 130 war events in the Civil War in Jefferson County, the 80 blood relations of George Washington in a single churchyard, and one little event in Harpers Ferry in 1826 that changed the whole world ever since. And a man we don't know named John Hall is the very first one to make an object complex, mass-produced, with every part interchangeable. That's really not why we're great. This was a cradle of American values. And it happened by accident. And it happened almost by a miracle. Because people from all over the world in about 1730 were disenchanted and needed freedom. And uh, destiny threw them in every different direction. And for them, landed in one place, only one place, Jefferson County. In 1750, it was actually the northeast corner of Frederick County, but it's our little corner of the world. The birthplace, the cradle of American values. Okay, so now I'm on the limb, just cracking really quickly, <laughs> right? What we have here, and you can do all the research you want, but it was the, it was German Lutherans. That country is my choice of the words for, for folks from uh, Scotland and Ireland, and what they call the Virginia Cavaliers and African Americans. Certainly Native Americans lived here for thousands of years, but this is what happened. You're uh, in, in your back country in, in Ireland, and your clan has fallen apart. You're now uh, a tenant farmer on the great the land of an English nobleman, and 1730 triples your rent. And a massive, massive migration comes to America, and you are gonna own your own land. In the Palatinate in Germany, 1720 and 30, Germany didn't exist yet. The Palatinate is a region, and you're a good German, the French king invades and wants to make you a Catholic. You say, you've got to be kidding. You go up the river to Bremerhaven, take the ship and you head across to the unknown, and you are going to worship as you please. And these two groups come to Philadelphia, move west, and then the word gets out that it's a really nice land just south of the Potomac. And that became the story of the entire Shenandoah Valley. Germans are going to worship as they please, and backcountry <coughs> settlers who are going to have their own way. But we had number three and number four, and nobody else did. And those were the four, four huge chopped vegetables in what we could call the bouillon bays of the American soul. And if you add a little bit of cayenne, We'll call it All-American Ordering. Remember George Bush and Dana Carvey? Not going to do it. <laughs> Not going to do it. This is where it started. What do I mean? Well, we had, well, what, what about three and four? This is the extra. You're in England, and there's a guy named Lord Thomas Fairfax, about 1733, and he, he merely owns about five million acres. I don't understand why that is a source of unhappiness, but he's sitting there. He was jilted in love, really, big castle. And it's just like an old soap opera. Somebody came over to him and, well, Sile, you can change the name and move to another town, with the soap opera advice. And he didn't see the travel brochures, <laughs> but he decided to move to Winchester. No, he didn't see, no one showed him the real Winchester. <laughs> Um, so it was, a, it was a come down. But with somebody who's such a heavy hitter as that, comes and lives in Greenway Court in Winchester, something happens. And he hires this guy, 70-year-old George Washington, what's his name? And with him comes number three, the Tidewater, Virginia, the fancy, Word association, Episcopal Church, horse racing, gambling, um, that's strange, oh yes, and slavery. 
So Gates, Lee, Washington, why we have 17 Washington homes right now. This was their fiefdom. But that brought the Tidewater values to this area. And yes, tragically, it's also the African Americans. Well, let's face it, they built everything and cooked everything, right? Maybe a lot of our history had to do with some people knew how to cook fried chicken and some did not. Now, these four doesn't mean anything. But something <coughs> happened. The ingredients blended. The ingredients blended. The Tidewater Virginians were ambitious. George wanted his form of freedom. They wanted to dream. And instead of busting the backcountry guys, he would say, look, I can't live here all the time. I want you to take my land and you can live on it for a low rent for 20 years, provided you build me a good wood lot, a good orchard, and a nice cabin. Backcountry and Tidewater Virginia work together. Now, James Madison and George Washington, there's no other way to put it, loved the people in this area. You know, Shakespeare and Faust, our King Lear, they looked it down, and they said, thou art the thing itself. You're the embodiment of people who, who want freedom. It's so real that a man from Winchester named James Ireland, born again, used to be a Episcopal well, party boy, that he suddenly he's wearing sackcloth, named James Ireland. He wrote in his diary, he said, something's different about the Upper Valley. If I try to preach west of the Alleghenies, I must say, they're barbarians. If I try to preach east of the, of the Blue Ridge, I must say, they follow their, their Episcopal priests like a flock of geese. But here, in the, in the Upper Valley, he actually said in his diary at the Rare Books Room, the Library of Congress, in 1756, everyone is elevated by their differences of opinion. So true was it that Matthias Gottschalk, two mission Moravian missionaries, splashed through the woods in the same spring that George Washington splashing through the woods. And they encounter the bad. They encounter the man, which we'll call Solomon Hedges, the constable. And this means they're going to go into jail because they're practice, they're trying to preach Lutheranism in Virginia, we think. But I said something different is afoot where we live. And they, the exact diary, they go, ah, Mr. Hedges, we understand. You propagated to throw us in prison because we're preaching our other ways. And what are you talking about? I want you to marry my daughter. <laughs> we were different. Perhaps because every capital day ever one of the governors was too far away. Anger against England, the heel on our neck. Who wants to fight first? Out here, called the Fort Gower Resolution, way before anybody else was ready. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. And we close it off this. You're in a meeting in July. No, late June, early July in Williamsburg, you're George Washington or Adam Stever. And there's a little vote. It's okay, there's this thing being discussed called a working title Continental Army. You know, we're going to have a Continental Army. And it's kind of coming out of Boston, but we have to come up with some guys down here, or, you know, there's no nation. we got to show that we've got some skin in the game. And they said, could somebody find some companies that are willing to march way far further than the 50 miles is the most they ever walk to join this thing tentatively called the Continental Army? And you can just see Adam Stephen from Martinsburg and Washington looking at each other and doing a, you know. A word comes out to Winchester, 